New Horizons is lacking, not packing. So in this video, I'll be listing off all the content and features that should be and would be appropriate to return from older games. Most of these listings are from New Leaf, as is New Horizons' direct predecessor, but I list features all the way back to the original. So in no particular order, here is all the missing content that should be in New Horizons. For the people playing solo or online with friends, it's really bizarre that there's only two options for, for official games to play. There are card games for when you're inviting camping villagers to your town, which are fun, as well as the rare treasure hunt, but somehow hide and seek has been removed. There are certain games that can be built for online multiplayer that have been around since City Folk slash Let's Go to the City, but the absence of actual mini games in New Horizons is pathetic because they were officially introduced in New Leaf in the form of island tours on Tortimer's Island which when added all together gave you 60 plus unique minigames, ranging greatly in difficulty. These games included all types of bug, fish, and deep sea creature catching activities, as well as labyrinths, gardening games, fossil hunting, item matching, and more. With the maximum online player count now being 8 per island, this is a huge missed opportunity. Now this one has sort of blown me away. For fish, despite being up by 8 from the last game, taking a total of 80, 3 fish were just straight up redacted. These aren't just any fish either. The barbel steed, the eel, and the rainbow trout are gone. After looking into it further, the barbel steed and eel weren't features in Pocket Camp either. Although the rainbow trout was, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. It's interesting to find that this isn't the first time fish have been dropped in Animal Crossing games. Other than the three previously mentioned, there have been six fish completely removed since the original game. For bugs, I kind of assume that they were all there. But as it turns out, a good couple have been removed, replaced, or even renamed. Most of the renamed bugs are fine, like the Longhorn Beetle becoming the Longhorn Citrus Beetle, or the Fruit Beetle becoming the Drone Beetle. The one that isn't okay is the Bee, who is turned into a totally different species to become a Wasp. They do the exact same thing and look the exact same, but I think it's a worthwhile distinction. The bug that has been entirely replaced is the Oak Silk Moth. To become similar looking, they're completely different, Atlas Moth. Finally for Creepy Crawlies, we have the totally removed insects, which include the lanternfly, the petal tail dragonfly, and lastly, the house centipede. And again, this isn't the first time bugs have been removed from Animal Crossing. I ask for a moment of silence for our fallen kings. In all seriousness, I look at it this way. It has become literal tradition for Animal Crossing developers to add exactly eight new critters of each type with each new game's installment. But every few games they also remove creatures and make up for it by actually giving us more than eight critters to make up for the loss, as was done in New Horizons. Why are they even still adhering to the eight new critters each game? Why wouldn't they just not remove any critters? I'm sure it'd save some development time. I'm honestly thinking that the team is genuinely restricted to only eight new each game. And if they ever want to add any more, they have to start making sacrifices. It's nuts. I also think there's this weird strive for perfection in encyclopedias throughout all Animal Crossing games. As in, there's never any extra critter slots to the side. It has to be even. 5x16, 3x24 slash 3x10, 1x64, 1x56, 5x8, and so on. It's just so stupid. Cut the 8 new at a time crap and cut the uniform rectangle bullshit. Nintendo, I'm begging you. Please give me a fucking wetsuit. How in the hell are you supposed to have a game set on a deserted island and then not let the player swim, let alone an aquarium in your museum or fish in your game in general? Removing as fun a feature as swimming in the ocean, diving down, catching critters is beyond me. Assuming deep sea creatures aren't returning, why would you remove the octopus and the lobster? You could literally catch them as fish in city folk. I don't get it. They could have easily changed them back to catchable fish. This is why I think breaking out of the eight new critters per game idea is so important. 
You cannot have an aquarium without an octopus. Apparently there was a data mine that said diving and seafood are coming. But I think the amount of room available in the Critopedia is confirmation enough that we're eventually getting deep sea creatures back. Still on the topic of critters, used during true tourneys and kept score of in your encyclopedia, fish, deep sea creatures and bug sizes were a really neat way of creating a little distinction between the critters you can catch, as well as providing a true reference for how small or large some of the amazing animals you can catch in Animal Crossing are in real life. New Horizons does not have time travel in the traditional Animal Crossing sense. You can't go to any menu within the game and change the time slash date as you could in previous titles. Use it, I don't care. But with how this game has a focus on updates to incite continued play, rather than providing all the content from day one, what are you really time traveling for? If you're a new player, do not skip through the first month. That first month is meant to be what Animal Crossing is all about. It's such a shame that they dropped the ball so badly after those four weeks. I don't know, they were cool and should be here. An extension of your home. There were 12 types of fruit trees to grow a new leaf. That doesn't even include the five other perfect fruit. Have a wild guess how many fruit trees are in New Horizon. There are six. Just six. That means all up, 11 unique types of fruit are missing from New Horizons. Oh yeah, and obviously, since there's no perfect fruit, there's no rotten fruit either. Hell, even Pocket Camp had all 17. It even introduced a new type of fruit, grapes. A data mine suggests that the dev team are or were planning on adding growable vegetables that you can pick to the game. As exciting as that might sound, I would much prefer they add the 11 missing fruit trees back first. It's honestly really disheartening because although I know that we'll most likely see a lot of them return in some form or another with future updates, a bunch of formerly essential characters and their buildings have been made totally redundant. For example, Dr. Shrunk has been made just about useless, thanks to normal villagers now being the ones that approach you with new reactions. And I generally doubt Club Lowell is getting a building all to herself, let alone returning. Another favourite is Harry, who definitely has a better chance of returning. Still, she had her entire haircutting slash styling profession thrown out the window when the player miraculously learnt how to use clippers and dye. I also thought that part of this game's marketing was that every prior villager was returning, but that's false because all the amiibo villagers, Holden, and the Sanrio characters are missing, as well as the 73 poor souls stuck in limbo since the N64 GameCube games. Please, set Nosegay, Pigleg, Meow, and Bao free. There's just so much missing here. It's so disappointing. The Able Sisters don't work with LaBelle, despite this whole redemption story that takes place where they still work in the same building in New Leaf. It's easy to forget that in New Leaf, Nook's Cranny had not two, like in New Horizons, but five different upgrades, providing us more and more room to acquire more items and more furniture. It was also the perfect way of integrating multiple characters into one building. The final TNT Emporium was three stories high and housed Timmy and Tommy, Leaf and his shop, and on the top story, Gracie and her shop, and again, we're missing a lot of buildings from previous games. This is the first truly missing event thus far. In New Leaf, this was a super harmless event where Blanca, the faceless cat, would wander around your town until spoken to, then disappear into one of your villager's houses, impersonating them, with the goal to figure out which is the real villager and which is Blanca. If you guessed correctly, this is how you could obtain villagers' pictures. There have been multiple videos put out attempting to explain their disappearance. Most look to their real life inspirations, the Hanuwa, terracotta figures used during the Kofun period in Japan, that were intended for ritual use, being buried with the dead. One such video, by the Big O Review, initially had me persuaded, where he claimed the reason for their disappearance was obvious. It's a deserted island. Why would gyroids be a part of a funeral ritual? when no funeral ritual could have taken place. In his video, he makes out that deserted means that no human or animal has ever lived there, which isn't really true. If an island is deserted or uninhabited, it merely means that there is no permanent human population on the island. Also, a hell of a lot of animals call these islands home. But here's the thing, if he's referring to animal villages as general animals and them not having lived there before, that's stupid. Apologies, but Animal Crossing and real life are not the same thing. Gyroids are a feature that should just generally be in the game. Besides, cool thing of note, Hanua aren't even exclusively human in real life. Hanua can depict animals, 
closed people, tools, even homes, I definitely recommend researching them. They're really cool. Um, and if I've got any information wrong, uh, my apologies. Otherwise, the only excuse I could come up with as to why they're currently not in the game relates to their limits in previous games. Now this makes sense to me, but if it doesn't to you, please tell me, but I'll try to explain it the best I can. In previous games, all the way to New Leaf, saw limits on the amount of active gyroids allowed at a time per room. As you can see, Wild World and New Leaf both feature the smallest number of active singing gyroids. My point is the outdoor decorating ability. If for whatever reason they choose to keep the space limit of four active at a time, how would that work outside? I mean, then only four would work, right? But that's so ridiculously restrictive, I don't know. To me, that just makes sense. It just wouldn't work. I just hope they increase the limit to the original's 14 or even expand it. It's just baffling that such an iconic feature of the series is just gone. Personally, part of the thrill from digging things came from the chance of digging up a gyroid instead of a fossil, and being super charmed by how weird and kind of disturbing they are at the same time. I'm sure they'll come sooner or later in an update, but it's, it's just so dumb, as a lot of these features really should have been here from day one. Kind of relevant, but why are pitfall seeds so difficult to get? They're like the third part of the digging experience. Why do they not naturally spawn the island? You might not be mayor anymore, but who cares when you have so much more freedom as a resident representative? Thinking about it, one exclusion that is odd are town ordinances. Basically four different rules that you can put in place in your town with differing effects. If these were to return, they don't necessarily need to have the same advantages, especially since a few of them aren't even viable in New Horizons. But the ability to cater your island to your playstyle and your needs is always great. Nowhere near as extensive as New Leaf, customizing the outside of your house in New Horizons is much more simplified, but at a cost. They've prioritized quantity over quality. Mailboxes, for example, have 33 variations, up from New Leaf's 22, but New Horizons only offers five unique types of mailbox, with the rest just being color variants, as opposed to New Leaf, where 16 of the 22 were completely unique mailbox types. Again, with the final six mailboxes being color variants of the standard mailbox. This is in no way exclusive to mailboxes. <laughs> You cannot see all of that and tell me they have a preference for color variants as opposed to unique designs. Hell, three customization features from New Leaf aren't even in New Horizons. The nine pavement options, the 22 house fencing options, and most importantly of all, the four architectural styles. This also does not scratch the surface on what town changes, like customizing your train station and town hall were available. Not sure if this is a fair comparison, but you can still sit on tree stumps, so why not rocks? Why would you remove that? Now, that sounds really weird if you aren't familiar with what I'm referring to, but where the heck are all the cool tree patterns you could find on the stumps after cutting them down? It should be here. Having all of your items stored in one place is the most satisfying thing in the world. I'll give New Horizons that. Going back and forth between endless layers of storage in my new leaf wardrobe, cabinet, dresser or drawer and secret storage was hell. But one thing I don't see many people mentioning is the fact that it had portable storage. Let it be only for your wardrobe, cabinet, dresser or drawer inventory. The second story lockers in the museum, as well as the locker in the train or tram station was so useful. Put a locker in the airport. I'm sure that'll save people a lot of time. Time capsules, fruit requests, there are probably so many more to mention. A bunch of people dislike these goofy little missions in New Leaf, but I love just how dumb some of the tasks they'd ask me to do were. It's kind of endearing how stupid the villagers were. Makes them feel a little more hollow without them. Large sets of themed functional furniture that would include wallpaper and flooring to bring them all together. 48 of which were available in New Leaf through various means. Some fan favorites included the Sweet series, the Rococo series, and the Exotic series. Those three are currently missing, with all up, 47 of the 48 missing. The only exceptions being the Egg series, reinvented to become the Bunny Day series, and similarly, the Lovely series, reworked into the Cute set, despite this series clearly being entirely different. Understand that a series is different from a set. As a set, it is not a large group of furniture with flooring and wallpaper, as a series is. 
and of course I think there are other series furniture new in New Horizons I just can't find much it is really bizarre though that there are a lot of sets that could easily become a series like the fishing tournament prizes or the diner set that are just lacking flooring this is another really important comparison between games that again shows the huge reliance on color variants in New Horizons to fill up the catalog all up New Horizons has a huge 5,290 pieces of furniture, but when you exclude color variants, you are left with only a measly 656 without them. Have a guess how New Leaf looks in comparison. The complete New Leaf furniture catalog without any of New Horizons color variants features 2,026 unique pieces of furniture. How back is that? I'm sure you've also noticed that a lot of furniture items have had their prices ridiculously inflated. You wanna know why? It's to discourage people from straight away buying all sorts of furniture to keep you from realizing that this game features 1,370 less items than its predecessor. There aren't even any excuses for it, not to mention the fact that color variations are considered separate items to the default item. Do not get me started on how stupid this is for clothing. God knows how many pieces are missing, but it's clear as day. They're pulling the wool over your eyes in the exact same way. I forgot color variants were even a thing in New Leaf. And man, New Leaf handled them so much better. You just got the original customized by Reese. That's it. Seeing as I doubt the super high cost of most items in the furniture is gonna change. Where oh where are City Folk's credit cards? They somehow skip New Leaf, but Nintendo, I am begging you, please add them back to New Horizons. If you're gonna raise the prices on furniture so high, at least make it accessible for the people who can afford it. It is an essential. Staying dormant since Wild World, acorns are back. Only as a crafting material currently. But why not bring back the acorn festival with Kornama to complement them? Bring different sized acorns back just for the event and prize people with some more acorn related clothing and items. They didn't even do anything, but it's just one of those cool, exciting, charming things that you could find an Animal Crossing. And it's gone. I could take it or leave it with this one. I didn't get the opportunity to use it in New Leaf, but homes aren't as important as they used to be, since your entire island can be customized just the same. But I think if an island like Halves was introduced, bringing Digby back, allowing you to visit models of your friends' homes, and share your own with people online, maybe introducing theming events to compete with your friends, it would definitely bring interest back in decorating your house. Made just about redundant by the ability to place furniture items outside, its lack of return is such a lost opportunity. Larger buildings, art, and other structures with actual purposes should be confined to the separate build menu. Speaking of, I had no idea this was ever a thing until I watched a JVG's Jeff video on the GameCube game. And holy shit, I grew up wanting to go inside that lighthouse in City Folk so badly. This is beyond perfect for New Horizons. There's clearly a spot dedicated for a lighthouse along the beach. The shoddy little lighthouse you can place does not cut it. Make this a functioning tool that has in-game results. I covered this in my previous video, but I had no idea this used to be a feature in the original game. Where the hell did it go? Bring it back. They're most definitely in the game, but still serve no such kinetic purpose as they did in the original. We can make football fields now. We should be able to actually use them. Before I suggest any more festivals or events, let it be known that there can't be too many festivals in Animal Crossing. The excitement you get for each upcoming event will only lessen if the amount of festivals available saturate. That being said, Wild World's Flower Festival will be a great way of giving flowers in New Horizon some functionality outside of the occasional craftable. Competing against villagers to see who can create the most beautiful garden would be a lot of fun to see return. There's not much to it. Um, it's a cool little feature, bring it back. Again, another fun little bunch of items that despite all of the new items similar to them, Uchua fans, party poppers, the ocarina, the tambourine, etc. They've been lost to the charm purge. Balloons, bunny balloons, pinwheels, the bubble wand, dandelion puffs, tweeters, ice cream, which I had no idea was ever in New Leaf, fountain fireworks along with sparklers, and roaming candles are missing. It's such a shame. Fireworks, fireworks, uh... You can place an actual bonfire outside now. Bonfire night can now be a proper event. Red could easily reprise his role from New Leaf, sitting behind the cookie stand where he sells Red's cookies that have the chance of giving you a prize. Fireworks are too good of a thing to leave missing. Where in previous titles, you would expect to see a new post on the boards and board almost daily, New Horizons iteration is dead. Of course you might see the occasional birthday reminder or post from a friend, as well as fishing tourney reminders and other events, but it's just so shallow. There's nothing to it, probably due to the lack of furniture items even available, 
These were a super exciting bunch of features that would give you better deals on items that otherwise would be very expensive, as well as giving a sense of the world changing without you needing to be there. They really messed with it at New Horizons. I really don't know how to feel about the wonky sizes presented when upgrading the second floor and the basement. It's important to remember that all of New Leaf's house expansions would end up with 64 squares of space, as opposed to New Horizons, which is all over the place, with all the ground floor side rooms maxing out at 36 squares, and the second story and basement, wonky, at 60 square sizes. The overall size limitations and simplification of house upgrades just create another task that should have been expanded, so it would have taken months, even years, to fully complete your house, rather than just one month. One of the most surprising removals from New Horizons are the Nintendo-themed items, furniture, and clothing. We may have received a new playable ocarina instrument and two in-game versions of Switch consoles, but all the goofy, charming Nintendo IP-themed furniture, harking back to their long video game history, are gone. Otherwise, the closest things we have to it are the promotional Pocket Camp themed items. The worst part about all of these items and features being missing is the fact that, obviously, the game's already out. You can't hold too much anger towards what we currently have. You have to make sure that our voices as the community are heard, so a lot of these can return in the future. And although we are already getting painstakingly slow updates that are bringing series-long staples back, it still isn't good enough, especially when the characters and features that are returning were clearly intended to be in the game from day one, with some of them still feeling half arsed in their overall presentation. Despite the number of quality of life improvements here and there since New Leaf, Animal Crossing New Horizons somehow manages to severely misunderstand the fundamentals of what makes an Animal Crossing game, simplifying systems that didn't need fixing, and overall prioritizing the development focus poorly, with an inconsistent, unfulfilling experience that has made me frustrated more than anything. It is so anxiety inducing to see features that should have been there from day one added later on, being treated like exciting new qualities. It's almost as if they've taken a mobile game an update focused mindset to a series not equipped for it. In my last video on New Horizons, I tried really hard to be as non-biased and as passive as possible. It has now been just about three months since the game's release, and I can confidently say I really don't like New Horizons. The game sucks. You can go ahead and blame it on burnout, but I've still barely played since those first four weeks. The game is meant to still have things to unlock and do for years, but somehow there is nothing left to do, and it is so incredibly disappointing. Please fix New Horizons. Same as last time, a big thanks to sites like Fandoms Animal Crossing Wiki, Nookopedia, Wikipedia, MoraDB, my friends who gave me suggestions for missing items, and the biggest help for this video, JVG's Jeff. If you think I've missed anything of note, be sure to comment what down below. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm proud of myself. And if you're proud of me too, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and share the video around. It'd really help. And give my previous video a look if you're looking to get informed on New Horizons floors. Thanks. Fuck, I'm done, yes! Yes, yes, yes!